Welcome to Coin Local 6 at 6. I'm Lauren McLean. Neighbors say the suspect would have young girls over at his apartment all the time. There are signs everywhere that say no trespassing, but that didn't stop two men from climbing onto this bridge. When police found an 81-year-old man in this house, he was in deplorable conditions, covered in his own feces, blood, and with flies all around him. Diane locked her bike to this post right here. When she returned, her bike was gone. The signs say, like traffic, most of us don't, and Dave Adams is hoping these signs get your attention. Through it all, in the hospital and out, the girls have always had the support of their softball team. Amazingly, a pair of motorcyclists only suffered minor injuries in an accident in Clackamas County. We're told the riders were just topping a hill on Upper Highland Road near Colton when a car backed out in front of them. The riders were rushed to the hospital, but again, were not seriously hurt. Four people ended up with stab wounds after a birthday party in Southeast Portland overnight. Police tell us everybody involved, including the attacker, is affiliated with a gang. The violence was the climax of a night that included street fights, bonfires, and noise complaints. It just doesn't make sense. Friends and relatives of a missing Portland father of two are spending the day looking for him. 42-year-old James Lund headed for the Ape Caves area of Mount St. Helens Thursday, but never returned. His cell phone pinged from a tower in the Ski Bowl area, and that's where searchers plan to search today. Details coming up. We'll see you in a few minutes, Lauren. Thanks, Matt. The controversy over whether to add fluoride to Portland's drinking water heated up again today. Doctors and dentists supporting fluoridation rode en masse at Sunday's parkways today, even as opponents gather signatures to block the plan. Well, they didn't win the World Series, but the Gresham Little League team got a real hero's welcome home today. The team arrived at PDX after being on the road for more than three weeks. The boys are definitely uh, homesick. The boys say they are anxious to get home and start football practice at school. Coaches are ready to get back to work and spend time with their families. Detectives are trying to figure out why it took so long for them to figure out that a 73-year-old woman was missing from her adult care home. In Northeast Portland today, people turned out to turn in their guns. Six separate home invasion cases were reported to Eugene Police sometime late last Saturday evening into Sunday morning. They all occurred near the University of Oregon campus. Five happened within just blocks of one another. In several cases, thieves didn't use force to get into the homes. In those hot summer months, it may be tempting to leave things like garage doors open to release some of that heat, but police stress that this is when your home becomes a target for thieves. UOPD says many of the items stolen were typical quick grabs that are usually high in value and relatively easy to sell. So things like laptop computers, uh, smartphones or music players, uh, video game consoles, that sort of thing. These items were among those reported stolen during the string of break-ins. One of the intrusions occurred when the victims were sleeping Sunday morning. One of the residents was awoken by the intruders. About 3.30, 3.45, I felt something on my leg. And it, I had my covers on and everything, so it was kind of like a subtle something. Overton realized what was happening as soon as the intruders ran from her bedroom. She went downstairs to alert her other roommates. I saw her boyfriend sort of turned the corner and I said, they stole our stuff and I sort of yelled at, it, at him and he started yelling and he said, hey, get back here. The suspects ran from the home in the dark, making their descriptions hard to pinpoint. UOPD sent out a campus crime alert to students and staff members and says the suspects are described as males in their late teens and early 20s. MacGyver says that while chasing after stolen items is a quick reaction, it is important to look after your own safety. That means, you know, getting out of the, the area where the person is and retreating to uh, a secure space like a bedroom or a bathroom or any uh, room that has a lock on a door. Reporting for Oregon News, I'm Lauren McLean. This may be what you're used to seeing at the rec center. People using the same cardio machines day after day. But it's likely that you don't often see a sign saying this. This new event at the rec takes physical exercise to new heights, literally. On Friday, February 22nd, the Rec Center put on the Mile High Club event to celebrate National Sports and Rec Fitness Day. From 4 to 6 p.m., students could sign up and compete. In 2006, we actually came up with the Mile High Club, obviously playing off the catchy name of Mile High Club, trying to entice students as to what's that all about. The name of this event was literal. The mile referred to a mile run around the upstairs track. The high referred to climbing up the rock wall once. The club referred to hitting a hole-in-one on a putt-putt course. The very first to finish all three tasks was Austin Reed. I mean, I had some free time and I thought, you know, I might as well do it. Austin's strategy was to rock climb first, assuming most students would start with running. 
Mike Fisher took a different approach altogether, participating in the event more than once to beat his own score. I'm just, I'm really competitive. The first time Mike competed, it took him 10 minutes. After he switched up his order of events, it only took him 7. It also helped him discover a new interest. Yeah, on the rock wall is really fun, so it's encouraged me to maybe, you know, climb a little bit more. Uh, but it has renewed my hatred of golf. That's for sure. The event as a whole served as a way for students to participate in types of rec fitness they wouldn't normally try. It also encouraged students to practice healthy habits for the long term. For J432 News, I'm Lauren McLean. The fall season has arrived and most people seem to enjoy the changing leaves and colorful scenery. People around campus have been decorating and getting into the Halloween spirit as well. Of course, there's one place that's always decorated for the holiday. People still get buried here today. Surprising to many students, the most recent burial was only a few months ago. They're all neighbors. They're all, they, I get along well with these neighbors. The cemetery might stand out as one of the scariest places on campus, but there are other spooky places around campus as well. There are rumors on campus about the Heads on Night Library and certain Greek houses being haunted. But some students who live close to campus think their own house is haunted. We think we have one ghost in this house, and um, we don't really know if it's like friendly or not. We think that it's a little girl ghost, and um, she hasn't done anything bad to us, but she's definitely like open and closed doors. It is kind of like scary to think that there's a spirit haunting 